uh, uh, the border has really opened because what has happened is that Nigeria has lifted its own end, has Niger lifted theirs. Remember, there's also uh, a closure, border closure announced by Niger. A counter. A, a counter closure, as it were. And then who benefits more from this border, you know, being closed by Niger? Because what it means is that uh, for those who are flying international, uh, the Niger route is uh, the easiest or closest you can, you know, into Europe. So it's it's still not oh, that's the point I'm trying to make. Uh, until we get that reciprocity from you know Niger, and uh, then we're ready to go. And remember that you're not just opening, talking about opening a border and talking about ECOWAS. Niger has officially pulled out of ECOWAS, so we're no longer talking about ECOWAS now. All right. So these negotiations has now been to be between Niger and Nigeria as two independent countries. Now, if you want to drill this down a little further, the first question will be, why do you close the borders in the first place? What were we supposed to be achieving? With close? What did you achieve on closing those borders? So if you're going to be moving forward and saying, sigh of relief, okay, were there cohesion, were there secession, were there, what were we trying to fight? What are we trying to protect? Because if you don't identify those things you are trying to protect, and then you wake up and say, okay, the, the borders are open, uh, business as usual, it, it doesn't work that way in international diplomacy, unfortunately. Well, if you want to, you know, you asked. Yeah. But let me also tell you that 80% uh, of the rice, foreign rice, that you're bringing into this country comes from that route. Let me also tell you that over 70%, you know, cattle of, uh, yeah, comes in there. Let me also say to you that, you know, Niger is a very major, very major trade route for us, which was why there was a national consideration to build a, a, a train line. And I'm not talking about the automobile industry, I'm not talking about other commodities. So it would be good to hear those things you're taking, you know, to them, okay, that might not be within, you know, the petrol and petrochemicals, uh, you know, areas. So sometimes in balancing trade, it's not about you know, that big thing you think you're giving. I mean, without giving those things, I've survived for eight months. They've gotten independent, they've gotten stable, they've gotten more confident. They no longer look at you as a big brother, okay? And they've called your bluff. That's the point I think all of us must understand. So we shouldn't be saying, oh, little brother, because from, your, from the way you're looking at it now, okay, yes, I beat my younger brother. You know, he misbehaved and I think I've uh, reset his code. Uh, he should be excited and happy. You know that I'm, I'm not I'm no longer angry with him but you're no longer in that eight months that you beat your little brother he's grown into something else he's going mm -hmm. to become independent of you and then please also do a check on what you are losing you know to the aviation industry vis-a-vis -vis the transfer cost to people who will now need to fly longer distances you know to keep away from the Niger airspace mm -hmm. so that's what's critical if you're thinking about I'd like to know those things, you know, apart from electricity, you know, apart from probably, you know, uh, petroleum products that were really, you know, trading with Niger. Well, they if you probably oil. this and probably that, yeah, those are please, big like, things. Get, get, get those things. It would be interesting <laughs> to know them. But, but, but I think it's good. I, I think it's good to be.